Islam and Christianity have been portrayed as mortal enemies for 1400 years. Locked in combat until the end of time, when, finally on the day of judgment, God will announce the winner. This so-called clash of civilizations has defined Christian and Muslim relations from the wars of the Crusades to the war on terror. A story of distrust, sometimes spilling into hatred, that can only be resolved by one side triumphing over the other. But there is another story. It's a story that revolves around one man, a man whom a billion Muslims and 1.2 billion Christians both called Messiah, but in very different ways. Jesus. Christianity does not have an exclusive claim on Jesus. He's a key figure within Islam. Islam's account of Jesus' birth, his life and his death may be uncomfortable for Christians, few of whom know much about it. A person cannot be a Muslim unless they believe in Jesus. Friday is the holy day for Muslims. At Finsbury Park Mosque in London, worshippers pack in for prayer. It's a scene that plays out every Friday in every mosque in the world. In Muslim countries, it's a holiday. In Britain, it can mean a late dash from work to cram it in. Many will miss the subject of today's talk, how to take inspiration from the example of Jesus. We remember Isa salam because there is something unique about him. If you are introducing Islam to someone or someone is embracing Islam, we just tell him, with the testimonial of faith, he has to say, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and I bear witness that Jesus is the messenger of God and his servant, just like Muhammad. If you are a real Muslim, you have to believe in other prophets. You have to believe in Jesus and Moses, and we do believe in them. We understand that Jesus is really important in Islam, and like even in the Quran, there's, there's loads of pieces like talking about him. Jesus starts something, and Muhammad finishes the conclusion. Complete. The conclusion for it. It's just like one religion. The Quran calls Jesus Isa, and refers to him as the son of Mary. This differs from the Bible, which refers to him as the son of God. He was given so many names in the Quran. He was given the name, the Word of God, and he was given the name, the Spirit of God. But so many times he was called Jesus, son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, because he was born miraculously without a father. Jesus' simple lifestyle holds appeal for many Muslims today. Muslims learn about Jesus from the Quran, the holy book, and also from the Hadith, the collected sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. Again and again, the Quran makes it clear. God speaking in the Quran says that uh, the Quran is not coming to cancel out the message of the Bible or the Gospel or any of the great scriptures of the past. And the Quran says, We are telling you the best stories. Many stories famous in the Bible can also be found in the Quran. There are accounts of Jesus' miracles, there's even a chapter called Mary. One of the things that you'll notice in the Quran is that many of the same characters that we find in the Bible are there. Like Adam, uh, Cain and Abel, Zechariah is there, Ilyas is there, Solomon is there, David is there, Pharaoh is there, John the Baptist is there. Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, and the rest. But you'll find nuanced versions of these stories that sometimes differ from the, uh, the biblical narrative. We remember Isa because there is something unique about him. 
Jesus Islam, was mentioned in the Quran in 154 times, in 19 sources, more than Prophet Muhammad himself. When someone told me there's a chapter Mary in the Quran, I was like totally gobsmacked. I was thinking, hold on, I went to school with a lot of Muslims, and then none of them, none of them told me this. So I said, what? There's a chapter Mary? I said, what? The, the same Mary as the mother of Jesus? I said, yeah. I said, no, I've got to get this Quran. Allah spoke to Jesus, peace be upon him, and gave him some new rules. He gave him a book called the Injil. Just like he gave Prophet Muhammad afterwards, the Qur'an. What I emphasize, that which is common between us and the Christian, between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Jesus Christ, must be brought together in the life of the children, so that when they live in the wider world, they appreciate that we all come from the same father, and we all have the same ideal. We as Muslims, we have to believe in Jesus, son of Mary, so seriously that we believe he is going to be coming as the prophet of the end of time. If Mary was here today, as far as I'm concerned as a Muslim woman, she'd be rolling with us, you get what I'm saying? Like, she'd be rolling with us, she'd be dressing like us, you know. She'll be, she'll be setting an example the way we're trying to set an example. Before I was a Muslim, you know, I had a red Mohican, I was like into short skirts, I was walking about thinking, yeah, you know, I'm liberated, I'm liberated, but I realised men just didn't have no respect for me. Whether there was any mention of Muhammad وسلم, in the Christian Bible. Most every religion tries to find the Bible somewhere in their teachings and their beliefs. So does the Quran. That the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was mentioned by name in the Bible. I have read the Bible through many, many, many times. In the Old Testament, in the Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16, in the Hebrew language, it reads, Hikko mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim zehdudi vi zehrei bayna Jerusalem. Mamittakim vi kullo muhammadim, 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 